Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of our risen and present Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we begin this morning, I'd like to ask whether we have visitors with us. I'd like to welcome you with a special greeting card. If you're visiting, you can raise a hand. I'll know where to find you, and I'd be glad to bring it down your way. I see many, many familiar faces gathered here for God's word and his supper today, and we're glad for that. I don't see any hands going up, but I do see our ushers ready with our Change for Change baskets. Uh, it is the third Sunday of the month, which is a Change for Change Sunday. This month, the offering will go to His Way Events, which is based out of New London. They put on the annual fall youth gathering throughout the area, both in the afternoons and mornings at area schools, and then a large combined rally at one of the area schools in the evening. So the ushers can come forward with their baskets, and I would invite uh, Bob Eggleston forward for an update on our roof project. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Brian has Joey, so I had to have something, and I have my hard hat, and I'm here going to give you an update on the parish hall roof replacement today. As of this past Friday, the old roof with the asbestos has been, re been removed and hauled away. A new roof has been installed. You'll see some pictures of this. This is the looking at Ann Street. This is the uh, area uh, over the parish hall and the back of the stage, etc. Next one, please. This is there to the bell tower. Uh, and uh, this has been all completed. The small roofs and so forth have been done. And we are waiting now for the church. Next one. This one here is facing 15th Street. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, stuff on the roof that had to be put, uh, built around, etc. But everything is now covered, and we're waiting for the next phase. A new roof has been installed, including the small flat roofs on the elevator, the restroom, and the entry off of 16th Street. The crane that was on the site has left us. The area has been cleaned up, and all that is left is the installation of the scuffers, the downspouts, the skylights, and the capping of the coping stones around the roof. It should be done by the end of the month. There were a few deck areas needing minor attention and one bad area by the bell tower, probably 60, 60 square feet that had to be replaced. Otherwise, the roof was in good shape. The roofers for the church and the parsonage should be here within a week or two. At that time, you'll be able to see the progress from the ground as you drive by or come to church on Sunday because it's wide open. You'll be able to see them put the lattice work and everything else up. The next pictures that you see are the heating and cooling exchanger. This is the heat and, and air conditioner exchanger. Uh, that has been placed down below this, the, in the basement here. Next one, please. And this is the boiler that is now going to give us the heat in the church. It is a boiler of 400,000 BTUs. It's very small. It has an efficiency of over 90%. Uh, this project has been completed and is in operation. The exhaust is, uh, goes out the side of the building now so the old chimney can come down. This project that we had also with, this pro uh, with the roofs should cut down our heating expenses and repairs that would have been needed on the old chimney. 
At this time, the property committee would like to thank you for your continuous support of this project, and there will be more Temple Talks in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Bob, for the update. And uh, I was uh, made aware, too, that the Roof Fundraising Committee will have a bit of an update in the uh, early part of October, too, so you'll get an idea of how we stand as far as finances go. We begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You may kneel as you are able or remain seated for the confession. We need a new slide rather than the picture. <laughs> there we are. Merciful Father, you know my. God is full of mercy, compassion, and steadfast love. For the sake of his beloved Son, Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins and promises the indwelling of the Holy Spirit for the amendment of your sinful life. Please stand. And for our piece this morning, there's a brief stewardship of talents uh, introduction. And Anne and the Christus Singers will give us that. Good morning. In your bulletin today, there is an insert that says how we can share our talents. And today we're talking about not our money, but the talents that we can give personally. And here's a great example of that. These are our Christus Singers. We actually recruited another one today. If anybody else is out there and wants to come and sing, they can. But we want you all to show that even through song, it's such a blessing to the Lord and to each other. So please join us in, in this, and the kids will lead you. I think most of you, if you were in a church choir, you knew this song when you were young. <laughs>
follow that. Here we go, Ancients of Days. pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty and merciful God, in your boundless goodness, guard us from all that is harmful, that we, being ready in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things which you would have us do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Amos, the eighth chapter. Hear this. You who trample on the needy and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will the new moon be over, that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shekel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and sell the chaff of the wheat? The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who dwells in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? And on that day declares the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun, and the end of it like a bitter day. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from 1 Timothy, the second chapter. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, 
prayers, intercessions, and the thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing, if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. The word of the Lord. Would the children please come forward for a children's message? Good morning. I got a question for you. If you were to have a thousand dollars what would you buy do you have any ideas anything you would buy for a thousand dollars no any toys if you you would ever anyone would buy a toy no. what would you buy food hey snack food something like that or just any food any food thousand dollars you can get a lot of food with that what would you get with a thousand dollars? Would you buy any baby dolls? Yeah, baby dolls. Would you buy any baby dolls, Bryson? No, <laughs> no. What would you buy? A big foamy cheese head? No, <laughs> no. A, a packer cheese head? Yeah, yeah. So packer, you'd buy some packer stuff. Well, you might get to borrow the long snapper for a day on a thousand bucks, but anyways, but, uh, but well, maybe you can get some good seats to a, a Packer game or things like that. Money at certain points can buy us a lot of fun stuff. They can buy us toys. They can buy us food, like he said. They can buy us baby dolls that we can play with. They can buy us, for some of us, they... $1,000 could be a good payment towards a rent to stay in a house or a nice vacation. Money actually can do a lot of good things too. Because of generous people and the money they give, we're able to fix our roof. Isn't that nice that when they give money to it, fix the roof to our church? We pay money so that we, uh, we pay taxes and money so that we have police officers and schools and things that do good things. Money can do a lot of good things, but the one thing money can't do is buy us heaven. Money uh, can do a lot of great things, but what buys us heaven is actually nothing of our own. What buys us heaven is Jesus. And that money um, actually sometimes can get in our way because we think, oh, Maybe if I give a little bit of money here or give it to a nice cause, that maybe I'll be right back in good standing with the church or with God. But actually, what we need to go to heaven is one, to say we're sorry when we make mistakes. But then Jesus says to us, we're forgiven. All we need is the forgiveness from Christ 
knowing that your sins are forgiven. And that's how we buy heaven, not by uh, $1,000 or anything like that. It can do a lot of good things with it, like for mission and giving us a building. But ultimately, what gives us heaven is Jesus. Isn't that nice? So that whether we're rich or poor, or no matter where we live or how nice our clothes are, that doesn't matter. What matters is if we have Christ. And that will always give us what we need, both food, water, and heaven. Isn't that nice? Well, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gifts that you give us through buying them with money. Thank you, God, for the gift that can't be bought. Our heavenly home through Jesus. In his name, amen. Good to see you. Please rise for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. He also said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager and, charge, and charges were brought to him that the manager was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in your account of your management, for you, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not enough to, uh, I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided to do so that when I am removed from manager, people may receive me in their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down and quickly write and write 50 then he said to another and how much do you owe and he said um, a hundred measures of wheat he said to him take your bill and write 80 the master commanded the dishonest manager for his uh, the master commanded the dishonest manager for his shrewdness for the son of this world are shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for, for, make friends for yourself by means of righteousness wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into an eternal dwelling. One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If then, uh, if then you have not been faithful in unri unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And they said to them, You are who ju those who justify yourselves before men. But God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is abomination in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. I don't know about you, but when you turn on the TV, there's many things. They seem to 
more and more at times be heartbreaking. Whether it be on the news and you hear the stories of people going through war throughout Syria, throughout the Middle East. We look at the television and we see scenes in California of fires that de devastate houses. We learn of floods in Louisiana that take out homes and lives and it breaks our hearts and we say why I think for many of us these questions can ask what did we do to deserve these things why did what did these people do why would a God who is so loving allow such evil and things happen in a world when he is so-called loves us. When to be honest, this is the topic in which we all think of when we hear of devastation. In our first lesson today of Amos chapter 8, God says to his people Israel that he is going to bring floods. He says, Behold, the days are coming, declares God, when I send famine on the land, not a famine of bread, not of thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. The sea, they shall wander from sea to sea, from north and to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. Many times when we see these things on television, we are looking for a word from God, but we cannot seem to find it. When to be honest, maybe the floods, the storms, the accidents, the wars, even though we might not like it, maybe the actual word of God seeking to gain our attention. In the, in the prophet Amos, he is addressing not just Israel, but then also the behavior of surrounding kings and communities and people who have drawn his people away from him. Amos is called to prophesy to Israel to say God is not happy. God is not happy with the behavior of his people and of the world and that the result of their hardened hearts this is why destruction, famine and war is rising all around them. And that these words from God, not to be jokingly, I want to oftentimes, when, oh, I'm about to say, I want to use, I, if, if I could speak like um, Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, he says, is there anybody in there? Can you hear me? God is seeking to get our attention, to wake us up that maybe the lives and the things we are following have drawn us away from him. Amos is calling God's people to wake up. To see that maybe because, you know, at this point in Israel, they were doing really well. They were financially well. There was a bit of peace. There was comfort. Their health was well. How many of us, when life is going well, forget to pray. How many of us when our medical situation is well don't give thanks? How many of us only turn to the Lord Almighty when death rears its ugly head? It's important that we do that. 
But sometimes with the good things of life, when things are going well, we become comfortably numb with our situation. I think in our world, especially America, we are a country for so long who have been comfortably numbed. I don't know about you. You could be watching the football game, and all of a sudden you hear Sarah McLaughlin's voice singing, and you see pictures of sad puppies, and what do we do quick? Turn it! What do we do when we hear a sad song and we see a picture of a starving child? Turn it! That makes us uncomfortable. We don't like to dwell with things that are uncomfortable because we like to, honestly to be blinded and comforted by football by health, by whatever else, money, by hunting, by hobbies that gain our attention and love and affection because they're what we like rather than the truth of God who calls us out to love those who are suffering, to love those who are Viking fans, no, who are politically different from you. We're called to go and serve and be God's people. The drought in which Israel was facing was not just a drought of food and water, but they were suffering from a drought of God's word. Because where God's word is not is where God is absent. When God's word is not in our lives in good times and bad, we begin to forgot, forget who the true God is. What does he say about you and our life and our situation, even when it's good? The blessings of our life, the things that are good in our life, are all gifts from God. But when we become so far from his word, we think it's because we've been so strong. Because we've been so financially smart with our IRAs and our retirement accounts. We've done it. we become bold. But then, the decline of the economy, the war breaks out. The car crash happens where you lose a loved one. And then you begin to say, where are you, God? Well, the word of God has always been here. God, who claimed you in baptism, has always been there. But your ears haven't wanted to listen. When Jesus says we cannot serve two masters, he's saying to us, it's not just money isn't bad. The things like hunting are not bad. But when we let something other than God possess our whole heart and our time and our finances, that's when we become acceptable to falling in the bad habits of worshiping not the true God. And we begin to assume what God thinks of us. We assume that he won't mind the secret sins of our heart. He won't mind if we abandon our family to make a little more money by working extra hours, I know that we, it's hard in this world today financially, but sometimes really it's not the needing of money, it's actually budgeting and doing things so that do we need the extra stuff in life, whatever it may be. What is God calling us to do? He didn't say that we're not supposed to use money. The church throughout the beginning has been blessed by people who have been wise with their money. The church here has been blessed by people through generation who gave their time and the talent of finances so that we have a place to gather and worship and hear the word of God. God 
has blessed us with people throughout the history so that we can go here in Clintonville to reach out and to be a ministry to a, where a world where people are starving, are, are, are needing the word of God. God, with the blessing of the gifts of finances, have helped us. But we do not worship the dollar. We do not worship the means to build it. We worship the God who provided it. And when we abandon the God who provided it, that's when things start to fall apart. That's when a nation begins to fall apart when they go away from the word of God. That's what happens to a family in a marriage when they abandon the word of God. It falls apart. The absence of God's word is the absence of belief and faith. And where there is no faith and no belief in the true God, there is death. There is starving. There is greed. For many of us today, we have those areas in our lives where we have trusted so far more than our God. And maybe the tragedy, the flood of life has caught up with you. And that the God who's saying, are you in there? Can you hear me? Has finally gotten your attention. Because I think, to be honest, the tragedy in this world is often what God uses to get our attention. Where and what is God using to get your attention? To make you realize that your money, your health, your strength cannot be relied on. That the only one true thing that you can rely on, God and His Son, Jesus Christ, is here for you. He has died for you. And that the reason why you and I are promised a new life. Amos, when he preached to Israel, he didn't only just preach this word of judgment. He also pro prophesied later in this book a word of gospel, saying that the people of Israel will rise again. And that their Savior would come for them. Those who are broken hearted. Those who are tired of a world filled with hate and division. The God of Jesus, the Christ, the Savior, would come. And he has come. He came. He died. He rose for you. So that on this day... Or you may be asking, why? Well, the reason why is because we have sinned. And the reason why he came is that a God so loved the world that he gave not his only son not to condemn the world, but to save the world. To save you from your pain, from your sorrow, from your suffering. Do not grasp on the things of sand that slip away, slip away and fall and die. Grab unto the things eternal, which are Christ. Amen.
Together with the saints of all times and all places, we confess the one true faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. You may be seated. We join our hearts together in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for fathers and mothers that you would maintain in them a desire to nurture their children in faith, love, righteousness, and self-control so that they will be a blessing to their neighbors and that they may know your tender mercy and life-giving power. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, we ask your healing power to lift up those who are suffering from cancer, from heart disease, and other life-threatening illnesses. Breathe your spirit into them. Cleanse their bodies and purify their hearts, that they may trust you completely and rest in the knowledge that they are in your hands, which will never let them go. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you have filled our homes, our stomachs, and our accounts with so many blessings. Help us to share these gifts of your love with those who have little, that they may be strengthened in body and soul to praise your goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, for prayers answered in your mercy, for kindness and grace, we praise your holy name. Help us to give you thanks for every new day, every new blessing, every new mercy, whether small or great, and to keep our faces and hearts turned ever toward you. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, all these things and whatever else you see that we truly need, grant us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose holy name we pray. Amen. We bring forth our tithes and offerings. Thank you. 
you stand? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we return to you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Lord, keep us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of your sins, and the promise of eternal life. Please be seated.
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and mind and keep you in true faith. And by his authority, I declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care of a few announcements that I failed to take care of at the beginning there. Um, don't forget to pick up, fill out, and return your estimate of giving cards. They are in alphabetical order right outside the offices. Uh, the flowers on the pulpit side this morning are from the family of August Zarling, whose funeral was yesterday. So we thank them for the flowers and uh, keep their family in our prayers in this time of loss. And we also thank the Zarlings as well as the Schumachers for uh, providing coffee and refreshments this morning. Please join us in the lounge if you'd like to. Uh, today there's a meeting at 4 p.m. for senior high youth group and for parents to discuss the possibility of a mission trip for this coming summer 2017. Uh, beyond that, check the parish news for information on Bible studies, the upcoming craft day, the fall family event, which is also coming up at church camp, and other goings on. Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace to fear God, love God, and trust God.